All right. Uh, if you see the meeting minutes and if you can access it, please go ahead and add your name to the attendees list. Simply helps us keep a track of who's attending and who's not. Um, apart from that, this call is more of a, a friendly version of the community call. And you can bring up any questions that you can post that you possibly have about the projects or setting up your environments or basically anything else. Uh, the agenda is also more of a running agenda and you can keep adding topics as and when you wish. Uh, that's it for the intro, I suppose. Moving on, um, Shivang, did you get your mesh tree set up then? Uh, unfortunately, not yet. Today we had a festival, right? So it was, I was kind ah, of nice. busy flying kites today. <laughs> oh, nice. That's, <laughs> that's quite nice. All right. Um, great. Uh, what exact issue were you facing? Uh, I think it was uh, somewhere related to Meshri Sync. Uh, I mean, there was this one upgrade and probably something like that, which was requiring for me to have Kubernetes as a requirement mm -hmm. for setting up Meshri. So according uh, how to- How were you setting up Meshri? Did you pull from the master branch or did you yeah, just- Yeah, everything, everything was like, I forked the repository, then I set the upstream according to the main master branch. Uh -huh. And I was following the contribution.md file, uh, which okay. basically pointed me on how to set up and start the project. Mm -hmm. So I was uh, Are having... you planning to work with the UI? Uh, I'm not very sure about it. I mean, because as soon as I got like my hands on with the website, so I started with that. Right. But I would love to have anything like, because I can, I am comfortable with front end as well as back end. So that's why I wanted to set up the project as in whole. Mm -hmm. So I don't right. think so the front end yeah. was having an issue, mm -hmm. but okay. because I was running this uh, command, which was uh, make uh, meshry, something mm -hmm. like that, right? I'll yeah. Just... Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So um, I have a suggestion for you, if you can mm -hmm. try that. Mm -hmm. uh, instead of going through the UI uh, setup or the UI build, if you just want to run Meshri and have a look and just play around with it, um, mm -hmm. simply go curl it. Simply go curl the installation scripts. You don't have to go poke the repo and then run the make file. You can just go in the curl command. It's that simple. Um... Uh, for example, let me... unless you're planning to work on MeshSync, which is why yeah, you I are mean, doing that. Yeah, I, I actually tried. I, I'm actually working on Meshri, not Meshri Sync. But the yeah. error, I think the error that was there in Meshri at that point of time was somehow mm -hmm. linked with uh, the Meshri Sync, which was highlighted by Dave uh, in the Even Slack channel. Yeah, yeah, I'm aware of the error. Um, yeah. Let me actually show you something. If you, yeah, sure. I think we pointed you to this. If he hasn't, let me point you to it. There's a link here. Mm -hmm. Um, let me go play the scenario for you and I'll show you what I'm talking about instead of go going and poking it and running the make file and okay so this is yes. like an interactive uh, to yep. the running machine yep yep uh, the site actually glitches a little bit sometimes, mm -hmm. so you have to restart it. Uh, if you go run the tutorials from our documentation, that won't happen. All right. Just a sec. Uh, hey, Joshua. What brings you here? That's funny. Let me just run the link today. <laughs> Yeah, that's funny. Let me servers down. All right, just a sec. If not this, then let's. That's it. 
great we side glitches sometimes um i'd recommend you to go directly to, to the documentation okay all right um let's the environment configure so this is like this is like a replication of exactly how what would happen if i would have set up the entire machinery project on my local machine right yep just like the yep. exact copy of it yep so this is basically trying it out without having to affect your local which is i think something would be that would be very beneficial for you as yeah, you're trying I mean, to avoid installing kubernetes yeah yep yeah because i mean my machine i'm not very sure that will it, will my machine be able to support the like mm-hmm. parallel thing of kubernetes and then the entire meshery project over it nice so let me ask you this uh, which system or which operating system are you on uh, i i uh, use ubuntu uh, okay. it's, it's um, actually not about the uh, OS you could say yeah. actually, which my machine yeah. is though it's just like 3 3 and a half years old but i am not sure that why it is causing an error these days but it is <laughs> i mean i do have sufficient hardware but still yeah that happens uh-huh. all right um can i ask the intel or which core are you using yeah so it's like basically intel i5 7 gen that is like somewhere all around right. 2.5 gigahertz okay. 8 gb of ram and storage okay. is 1 terabyte so Uh, HDD. All right. I was actually working with that exact specifications about two months ago. All right. And yeah, socket is a pain to run on those specification, especially if you're working on Windows. But you can. You'll have to <laughs> close down other browsers or anything else that is running in the background, and that is a pain. Ah, uh, that. But otherwise, yes. Yep. Ah, uh, so what I was talking about is this. If you. The minikube thing is actually not a necessity. We just ask people to install it because it's a terminal, and you won't be able to pull up any of the adapters without it. <laughs> so that's it. Uh, even if you don't go install minikube, if you simply go run this particular command, all right, that should do it for you. Okay. So like the entire mystery and everything. So this is like uh, the installation of the project itself. but yep. because now that i wanted to contribute in it so will i have to like again uh, install everything from repository and set up everything or like uh, uh, to get uh, the code yes you will but okay. to get the code you only have to fork and clone the repository you don't actually if you are making some changes to it and if you want to you know work with it or commit those changes then you will have to go run it but otherwise if you just want to Yep. If you just want to play around with it for a bit, or just understand what's going on without getting too much invested into the QBT side of it, this is a good way to go. All right. Okay. Acha, Shristi, I just wanted to ask Shriti. Sorry, I wanted to just ask an <laughs> overview yeah. in a nutshell of if I could like summarize what exactly is Meshri because I've been trying because again without installation I wasn't able to mm-hmm. uh, look around the machine and. i was not able to understand the project because unfortunately i haven't set it set up yet mm-hmm. but what exactly is meshri and like i have seen a lot of plugins and tools mm-hmm. so i'm not able to connect these things like what exactly is meshri okay okay let me give you, you a very small intro to it and mm-hmm. i'll point you to a few resources that you can go read for a much better understanding that i could possibly give you on a okay. half an hour call <laughs> uh meshri is a service mesh management plane If you go read about service meshes, they have three kind of data planes. Uh, a management plane sits on top of the other two, okay. or the other two data planes, and it basically um, when it manages, worth its name, or worth the salt of its name, it actually just manages the entirety of it. Uh, it's mm-hmm. built into the architecture of any cloud native application that you'll be using, so it doesn't affect the architecture that you already are using. and it basically just improves upon the efficiency of that particular cloud architecture plus it improves upon the security measures of that particular architecture what meshri does is provide you a platform in which you can go and um test or compare your service mesh against industry standards for example the smi specification i'm which i'm very sure you must have heard about yep. so far or yet mm-hmm. yeah So that is just a specification or an abstraction or of a couple of APIs, okay. which you can go um, test your service mesh against and see mm-hmm. how much it's worth, or is it worth its salt, or if it's working properly, or is it giving you the results that you wanted to give? Uh, okay. Just a second. All right. So in this particular tutorial, uh, there is some issue with the Cathode or 
system and we're trying to resolve that. But so for right now, you'll have to choose none as the provider, which is also given in the instructions. Okay. Uh, but if you're running it on your local, the Meshri server would run beautifully. Okay. The only difference here is that with a Meshri server, you need to authenticate your login credentials and with a none server, you don't have to. Okay. That's it. Um, okay. Yeah, so what I was explaining, yeah, so Meshri allows you to compare or te run tests or run performance tests against a uh, standard testing load. Mm -hmm. So that's it. Uh, a lot of what I'm saying will not make sense. It did not make sense to me either. <laughs> Barely about seven, eight months back. Uh, right. Let me do this. Let me point you to a few of resources. Uh, Lee's book is actually a very good place to start. Okay, cool. If, so you, I'll, are, I'll, yep. if you haven't worked with cloud architecture before, or if you don't have much idea about cloud native, I did not. Okay. That's a good place to start. Okay, I'll, I'll do that. Thank you. Okay. okay sure. uh, also, by the way, if you do not want to go set up, this is actually a good way to just go play around with the stuff. Yeah, I think now I'll try to do that. If I'm able to successfully install and run everything, I think that would be fine. But if not, then I think this is something that I should uh, straight away start working with. Great. That works. Uh, the labs come with instructions, actually. So if you're not very sure about how to do things, how to run, work with things, this, mm -hmm. uh, these labs should at least get you up and running with one of the adapters and a sample app. And should get you running performance tests in about 20 minutes, hopefully, if nothing right. goes wrong. If nothing goes wrong. Yep. Right. Well, that makes sense, so I'll try this out today. Okay. Uh, let me know if you found any, find any mistakes in it. This was my uh, GSOT project, actually. Oh, so this was like uh, the Karakoda was your, like the entire documentation yeah. and steps of everything. Yeah, the documentation and the entire category tutorials. It's something I've been working on for uh, some time now. I would love some feedback. Cool, cool, cool. Could you just like send me this link? Um, yeah, sure. Uh, there's a link in the uh, meeting minutes. I should try on a hands-on tutorial. Okay, okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Just copy the link. Okay. Yeah. Um, Joshua, welcome. I'm sorry if I forgot to greet you. If you can't speak up, that would be great. These meetings are more of an interactive session. I'm afraid most people do not expect that initially. So is it um, like is it, so yeah. this call is like maybe we can have a small introduction amongst ourselves or something like that, right? Yeah, it's supposed to be a community meeting where you can just come up and ask questions and just get a hang of the project before moving on to other project meetings. It's more of a, a, a finishing school in terms. Okay. Hello, can you hear me? Hey, Joshua. How are you doing? Hi. Very well. How are you? Okay, uh, I'm good. I'm great. Uh, what brings you to the FIF? Thank you for coming on the call, by the way. Uh, so I'm kind of new here. Um, I need to get set up. I need to know what's happening. All right. Um, let's start off with the basic questions. What are you interested in doing? What do you do? Which domains do you work with? Joshua, if you, uh, that question was for you, if you can answer that. Can you hear me? Yep, I can. Yes, so, I can. What was the question again? Uh, what domains do you work with? What are you interested in working with? Right. Uh, if your audio isn't working, um, chat works fine too. Please type on Slack channel. Right. Um, Slack works too, or you could just use the Zoom chat. Either works. 
uh, apart from that, Shabang, do you have any other questions? Uh, I mean, I really have to start uh, with the project itself. <laughs> and then if I have any questions, I'll make sure that I ping you on Slack. Sure. Um, what I can do for you, apart from showing you how to work with a simple tutorial, is that, well, um, I can show you what the UI is about, if that will help everybody on the call. Sure, please. Um, All right, let me just... Um, it's just Zoom so, settings. Uh, so, by, so by my question. Uh, yeah, Matt, go on. Thanks. Uh, can, I, can we take a... Uh, uh, a note, uh, write down a note. If we have an option like integrated web editor. I'm sorry, integrated what? Uh, web, web editor. editor. Oh, like, web editor. All like right. writing text, uh, not on terminal, but on a with a via a separate web text editor. Uh, so is it like the need of the project is like somewhere do we need to have some commands or something like that? Do you like to have a feature like that? Uh, I'm not very aware of that actually. Uh, I'm, I think you mean a cloud editor? If yes, right? cloud editor. Some, we will write our source code or documentation on mm -hmm. web like GitLab or GitHub. Right. Uh, we talked about this in the last meeting, right? I, I haven't actually had a chance to talk to um, the other people about it. Let me get back to you on that. Is that okay? Okay. I'll make sure to ping you on Slack. This will make uh, not only newcomers who don't have, who doesn't have any experience, but also the experienced programmers and system admins also, because some people run only web browser because they don't have access to Mac or Unix, um, BSD, Linux, etc. Uh, so they have only Windows and maybe they don't have any Windows subsystem for Linux. So a quick solution is running some code on web browser is uh, maybe fine. Gotcha. I'll keep that in mind. I can write or do you like to write for me, for us? Um, if you want take... to go ahead and include a topic okay, on the agenda. I will add a topic uh, for the layer 5 people and for, for sure. the internet. Sure, that works. Where should I write that? Um, here? Uh, the meeting minutes would be fine. All right. Um, all right, then let me give you an intro to the mesh uh, UI. Sorry, sorry, again, uh, just a minute before, uh, sorry to interrupt. Yeah, so, yeah sure. uh, so before I get this, like going on to the project, so by meshes, uh, do I mean that by this service as a meshery is basically a management tool system, which is used to manage the things like Nginx server or Kubernetes or other services like No, Kuna. no, 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 you're going in the opposite direction. <laughs> okay. Uh, let me suggest this. Um, service mesh is a, is a very, very new term, even in the cloud native area. Mm -hmm. uh, go read about it. It's not, oh. Meshi does not manage Kubernetes or Docker systems at all. It is okay. dependent on Kubernetes for some of its operations. Okay. But definitely not. I'll, I'll, I'll read it after. All right. <laughs> uh, no issues, none at all. Hey there. Uh, all right. uh, I just wanted to, hey there, sorry, my name's Philip. I just jumped on late, just wanted to introduce myself. Hey, Philip, um, that's great. Thank you for introducing yourself. Um, welcome to the newcomers call. Welcome to Layer 5. I think you were on another community call before, am I right? Um, yeah, one before, and then I've been on the Slack channel uh, previously. I think a few months ago, there was some problems getting the uh, meshery control uh, brew package to install correctly mm -hmm. and lee lee walked me through a few things and then i found out you guys are in austin and i am too so that's good that's great that's perfect actually um what do you do uh Which i'm a solution yeah i'm a solution architect for a large uh investment bank mm -hmm. and um we 
I think we currently have about 29 uh, Kubernetes clusters. The largest cluster has about a thousand nodes. Um, yeah. Everything from everything from running backend um, tool chain workloads to uh, some of our more advanced projects are doing um, AI and machine learning with TensorFlow and other things on uh, GPU nodes um, to detect things like um, fraud and money laundering and other stuff like that. Damn, that sounds like a big company. That sounds impressive. It, it is. It's a Fortune 500 investment bank. Um, nice. So yeah, I'm I'm interested in Meshery because I think um, myself, along with many others in the Kubernetes community, we have found that uh, we like the concept and the idea of a service mesh, but um, they're they're very um, constrained in certain aspects, and they sort of lock you into only doing things their way, right? So. Yep. Uh, for example, we tested out Istio, but Istio is just, it's everything and more, and, you know, it may be too much. And so I don't want to uh, standardize on Istio if it only yep. works for 5% of my use cases. Or we like Linkerd a lot, but Linkerd only works for us in certain use cases. So um, uh, I think I found out about, I found out about your product uh, somehow through uh, the latest KubeCon. And it's, it's mm -hmm. sort of meshery is exactly what I'm looking for because it offers me, the uh, architect and, you know, builder, uh, the ability to implement meshery. And then I can choose any of the available service meshes to test out and see which one works best in my environment. But the nice thing about meshery is that it also uh, helps me have an easy button, so to speak, right? So if yep. I try it and it doesn't work, then I just undo it and it's all back to the way it was before, which yeah. I don't, you know, I don't want to have a whole bunch of extraneous YAMLs sitting around or some customized values for a, for a Helm chart and mm -hmm. then try to remember what I did. You guys take mm -hmm. care of all that. So that's why uh, I'm interested in Meshery and um, wanted to jump on the meeting and uh, see how I can mm -hmm. better familiarize myself with the tool and uh, make use of it in my organization. I'm excited just hearing about the explanation. <laughs> Let me see that first of all. Post that, yes, this is the perfect meeting that you can jump onto to just get an idea of things before you move on to actual project meetings. Um, have you had a chance to run Meshri locally or otherwise? I, I have not yet. Um, I'm still mired in a few uh, projects that are carrying over from 2020. Mm -hmm. And uh, uh -huh. yeah. I'm, I'm going forward on a few 2021 and 2022 projects. Um, mm -hmm. And so it's on my radar. I just haven't gotten hands-on with it yet. Other than I tried to get Meshery Control installed through Brew. And like I said, had mm -hmm. a few problems, but Lee got me through mm -hmm. that, so. All right. Um that sounds perfect, actually. Let me point you to a few interactive sessions that we have on the go that you don't actually need to go to any setup on to run them. Uh, you'll find the link here. If you can access the meeting minutes, you should be able to. There's a link in the chat. If you can't, please do let me know. I'll make sure that you Great. do have access to it. Great, thank you. Uh, yep. When you do have access to it, we have two courses at the moment, which consist of a couple of scenarios, which are basically interactive labs which pull up a complete session for you and it has instructions that you don't run astray and you don't have to go do a bunch of installations or do a bunch of getting ready on your local system. So that should be good to go and you should be able to pull up Peshri and interact with it and just play around with it to get a feel of the product, to get a feel of what you can do with it, to run a couple of elementary forms tests, just to get better understanding of how things work, which is what I was showing right now. If you can see my screen. Yep, sure, uh, sorry. You have, I, there's two other Zooms I'm in right now at the same time, so I have to switch uh, back and forth. <laughs> I was like, that sounds hectic. <laughs> okay, uh, let me just say one quick thing then. Um, I'll point you to the link that is one of the best ways you can get started without actually going and affecting your local system. And it's the easiest and the fastest way to do it. After that, you can go install it locally. You can work with it. 
you can run whatever test that you want to. I'll also do another helpful thing that should be a little bit more helpful. I'll walk you through the UI so that it's a little easier when you actually do go ahead and work with it. Uh, so Meshri connects to your Kubernetes cluster um, without any configuration on your part until your config file is placed in the obvious location that is uh, in your home folder in a .q file or uh, in a .q folder. If it's not, all you need to do is, or if it's not located automatically, all you need to do is go to settings and select your cube config file manually. Meshri will do the rest. It'll pull it up. Um, it will get your cluster details and it will start pulling up the other adapters. Uh, the adapters should be up and running by themselves when you curl or install Meshri. Post that, what you can do if you are running Linkerd, by the way, um, go to the management page of that particular service mesh, name whatever you want to do. I'm leaving the default right now. And all you need to do is go select Linkerd service mesh. It will install the latest version for you. Post that, if you want to run performance tests and if you want a standard load, go install a man run a sample app. It should do that for you as well. Um, if you're running on okay. Windows, you need a little bit of setup done. Ooh, yeah. Windows, heck no. Uh, I think, <laughs> so yeah, sorry, I'm very- I, I really like the, the way. <laughs> just stay away, bad. Uh, so one thing uh, I did also wanna just uh, chat about that I was talking to Lee about also, I think I, I put in a feature request for it, um, is that mm -hmm. my my environments are air-gapped. So mm -hmm. this is the, this oh, is, okay. this is the latest issue that I ran into mm -hmm. uh, installing in a Kubernetes test cluster is that none of my Kubernetes clusters have internet access. Mm -hmm. So uh, that's where I need some air gap instructions from you guys, or I, I think maybe even parts of Meshery need to be updated to accommodate mm -hmm. an air gap installation so that everything, and I mean everything that um, Meshery would need to pull to push anything into my uh, Kubernetes environment or get anything set up needs to only come from my internal image registry. Yep, I'm aware so, of that. So I request, think that's the point. Yeah, that's the point that I'm going to be stuck at for a little bit. Yep, uh, you shouldn't actually be stuck for more than a day or two. I'm very aware of that request. And it's actually already been worked upon by um, a, a person called Marcin Kaisia and he should be about ready to make a pair. So you should be okay. ready to get him going, you know. Yeah, that would be, that'll be great. Months. Yeah, I'll, I'll, okay, I'll go check on that um, when I have a chance and then I'll, I'll start testing some things out um, and give feedback on how it's going or, or what maybe little new uh, roadblocks or speed bumps have come up. Yep, uh, that works out perfectly actually. Uh, in the meantime, the labs are a perfect way to start you won't have to do any other setup. Yeah, yeah. And, yep, yep, that should work for you. Apart from that, um, any other questions actually that I can answer for you? For anyone in the call? Maybe um, we can make a training session for everyone, not only for newcomers, for maybe support channel and the other development channels, uh, a quick solution, how to set up, how to run, how to sessions, how to training sessions, like what uh, you show us today, but a, a, a live session. Mm -hmm. but that makes I, I, all right, I, I will take down a note about that. Is it okay? Uh, sure, that makes complete sense. But with the tutorials, we actually have a set of complete instructions that you just need to go follow. Maybe and for setting that... up and running it locally, we already have a lot of documentation guides that you can just go follow and you should be up and ready on the go. Yes, Except but, uh... for situations like full up where you need, um, that's a system bug and it'll be resolved really soon. I will um, contribute uh, within that uh, style, maybe I can say. Uh, I'm happy to, happy to uh, work with or train with 
other uh, people, not only newcomers, like I said, a uh, few seconds ago. So it is not uh, a um, hard uh, task for me. I, I like that. I mean that I can uh, work with, maybe two days ago or three days ago, uh, I trained with uh, which friend, uh, with some newcomer, uh, with, we trained how to read documentation, how to git commit, uh, something like that. And uh, it was a pleasure for me. I can do that for uh, anyone. Uh, that's great. We actually already have tutorials for that. We already have a contributing guide and we also have a recorded tutorial for it, as far as I know. Yes, Let I can. Let me point you to it. Maybe I can uh, show the documentation and uh, train the documentation uh, in person who wants to work with me. Maybe this is the solution. Uh, sure, man, that makes sense. Let's add a point to the agenda and discuss it in Slack. Okay, we can discuss that on Slack, but now I, I'm gonna not take, take a note uh, because I think sure. that you don't agree with me on this uh, right uh, topic or not. Actually, I'm not completely sure what you're talking about, and I'd like to go read about it first before I give you an we answer. Will, we will discuss on that mm -hmm. uh, newcomers channel. Okay. Sure. I will write a message sense. soon after, after this uh, meeting. That's perfect. Thank you. I I, uh, I couldn't talk uh, correctly, sorry, but I mean, I want to help people in short. That makes perfect sense. Thank you so much for bringing it up and I'll be read, waiting to read your message. Okay. Hey. All right. Um, back to the UI for a bit. Um, any other questions from anyone in the call? Could be related to the setup, could be related to basically anything. Um, can we make a list of operating systems uh, what we run? Yep, we can and we do actually. No, no. For this meeting, uh, Shuban, uh, Shuban is, is it Shuban or Shubank? Uh, it's Shubank, yeah. But Shubank. Yeah. Okay, yeah. Shubank. Shubank, Philip Austin. Austin is the host, not a person. Um, Joshua and Shridi, um, I I'm gonna write Ubuntu 20 like that. Ubuntu 20. Uh, please write your operating system. What you have, um, one or more. Okay. Um... Um, but is this what is this for exactly? Maybe I can help you quickly uh, for the bugs because even we have a stable system, there are some minor fixes which is needed. So I I I, I, want, I just want to know what uh, you run. All right. Uh, yeah, that makes sense. All right, um, before we do anything else, let me introduce another tiny little program that we have going on. We have a mentor program that runs along with layer five and we call them MeshMates. So if you want an introduction to any of the projects or if you want just some help getting started or setting up things, what you can do is go ahead and get yourself a mentor. Alternatively call them MeshMates. Uh, all you need to do is go choose one of these people and contact them on the newcomers channel, asking them to be a meshmate. They will guide you through the initial setup. They will guide you through the initial project plans and help you choose a domain either which you want to work in or if you are a user, get set up. That should be something to read about after the call. Uh, post that, is anyone in the call uh, wanting to work on web development? Either front-end or back-end? Uh, yeah, so I've been working, again, mm -hmm. as like one of the issues that was like the GitHub deployment. And the next thing that I probably was going to work is 
one of the pages uh, in the new Gatsby uh, layer 5 NG thing. All right. Uh, are you set up with Gatsby and everything? Yeah, that, that I've set up. All right. Um, can I introduce to you to any of the other projects? Or do you need any help there? I believe you already have a mesh mate, Shabank. Either Josh or uh, Yeah, Josh. I do. Uh, no, it's I think uh, Vijay. It's Vijay. Vijay actually ping, ah, okay. uh, tagged me in a message. Uh, I pinged it, uh, hum, him up and mm -hmm. uh, we'll soon have a call and like if I have any issues, I'll ping him and I can ping you as well. So that's something. Uh, yes, you can definitely. Uh, Vijay is actually a very good person to get started with Meshri. Yes. Um, if you have any project related doubts, Josh, Tanuj or Nikhil would be good people to contact. Okay. Uh, same usernames in Slack as well, so they should be easy to find. Okay, I'll, I'll do that if I have an issue. All right. Um, Austin, hey. Thank hey, you for coming hey. on hey, yeah, is... How are you doing? I'm good, I'm good, I'm good. Just following up on the meeting and, and the discussion. So I can get uh, understanding mm -hmm. of That's great. It's actually been a while since I've seen you on one of these calls. <laughs> I actually jumped on the calls, but I just, I was on the last meeting call. With you. I just stay yeah. here, uh, have an illicit discussion so I can do better the science. Because mm -hmm. I very soon I'll jump on the Casacola you worked on. So I will make a design of it very soon. Let me bold this actually. A lot of people want to go. And when you try these, um, feel free to leave some feedback. It would be really, really appreciated. All right. All right. Um, okay. By the way, all of our calls are recorded. So if you want to go see any of the tutorials that we have, and we do do tutorials on the newcomers call, by the way. Uh, Shubhank, if you're interested, um, I think Dhruv did a setup on the Mesh UI okay. a couple of calls back. I'll point a link to you. Okay. Or if you can just go to the YouTube channel and select the newcomers playlist, you should be able to find it. So I think uh, the YouTube channel is too with the same uh, name. It's uh, layer yeah, five, You'll right? find a link here. You'll find a link here. Okay. okay. Just, uh, yeah, okay. It would be a just a little while back, a few months back, actually. It should be by Dhruv Patel. Okay, I'll, I'll, I'll definitely check that out. Perfect. Okay. All right. Um, anyone else? Any other questions? All right, let me uh, just introduce you to one other thing. And if nobody else has any other questions, we can probably end the call. Um, if you're working with Meshri and if you want to go read up on the documentation, this is the site to go to. If you want to know a little bit more about the programs or the way Layer 5 works, head over to this particular site. We are working on the next gen version, but it's not out right now, which is something what Shubhank wants to work out. It's some, if somebody else in this call wants to work on it as well, you're very, very welcome to. And if you do, please speak up so that I can get you some help on that. Um, sure. All right, uh, so this is the life site for all intents and purposes at the moment. If you want to go read up on the projects, go ahead and do so. It would be a good start. Also, uh, Shubhang, the book that I was talking about, it's not a very uh, big book. It's for, relatively for like the yeah. this architecture of meshing. Right? Yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. So basically understanding service mesh architectures. It's this mm -hmm. one. Okay. The enterprise part to service yep. mesh. It's not a very big book. It's a relatively thin book. So you can <laughs> go just read up on it. <laughs> I'm assuming yeah. you're not very fond towards books with exams just coming up. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'll, I'll read that, definitely. 
Yes, sir. Uh, this is for anybody in the call. It's a free book. You can go get a link. Any sign that you want. All right. Um, that should be it. Oh, right. Uh, we also have a few blogs that you can go read for the same intents and purposes. Uh, it will help you understand things better. Um, Philip, you heard of Flare Fiber Mesh Year Coupon, right? Was the North America one? Yes. Right. That was a fun coupon. Right. Um, I'm just looking for something to point you guys to, particularly. All right, uh, Philip, are you uh, looking to work with the SMI spec or just in general performance tests or any particular specification? Uh, not that far yet. All right. Okay, you just want to play around with the tool first and get the hang of things before yeah. cementing yeah. your interests. Yeah, just in our sandbox clusters, just sort of put it on there and mess around with it and see what breaks, see what works, see how we can break it and other sorts of... <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I have to break. Yeah, I have to break things on purpose um, before I can push them out to other environments. Since we're a mm -hmm. we're a highly audited and regulated sort of environment, I I need to know ahead of time pretty much as many of the failure modes as I can mm -hmm. figure out. So, and even just ridiculous things, right? So I gotta try to be aware of all that. So because if I that interrupt, that makes complete sense. Yep. Right. If I did something and I interrupted trading during the middle of the day, yeah, I, it's not very good. <laughs> so. Definitely agreed. That com makes complete sense, actually. And when you do break things, do come back and tell us about it so that we can fix for it sure. as well. Yeah, for sure. Okay. All right, folks, that's it. That's it for today's call. If nobody else has any other questions, um, make sure to take one thing away from these calls uh, that you know where to go next. The second thing that you know the people to contact if you fall into a roadblock. Post that, you should be good to go and you should be good to go to graduate to other project meetings. For example, Shabank, uh, you can possibly graduate to the website called. You have already, yes, I think. Yeah, I have actually. <laughs> yeah. That works. Uh, if you have, move on to the mystery call as well. I'm sure you'll learn, get to learn a bit there. Yeah, I'll definitely read up the book first and then I'll try to make my way in that meeting as well. Sure. Uh, Mert, let me catch up with you on Slack for sure. I'll make yeah. sure I go through your note and actually can give a proper response. Yeah. Uh, in, in, in time as maybe. Yeah, that works. Um, Philip, I hope this was a little helpful, at least to get started. I'd still recommend yeah, the hands-on yeah. tutorials. Yep. Yeah, I'd still recommend the hands-on yeah. tutorials until we configure your airtight gate. Faster is working. We should be able to get this working in the next one or two days, by the way. Hopefully. There's already a PR out for it, as far as I know. We just need to go test a little bit more and get it merged. Uh, Austin, thank you for jumping in. I'm a, already a fan of your designs, by the way. Thank All right. Uh, <laughs> uh, Joshua. I haven't actually been able to talk to you much on this particular call. If you can't speak up, that would be perfect. But if you can't, uh, let's catch up in Slack. All right. Um, all right, that's it, folks. Thank you for coming on. Thank you for spending a good 40 minutes on this call. Same time next week. See you. Thank you. Everyone. Okay, everyone. Bye bye. Bye. Hey, thank you. You take care. Uh, you too. Thank you. Thank you, everyone.